Good luck. Hello, everybody. My name is Lat Mackey, and this is Sequence Break, a podcast that features conversations with speedrunners, developers, content creators, and everything in between. This is episode 67, the legendary, the one, the only, Tampa. How you doing, Tampa? Good evening or a good morning for you. Well, that's a good day or whatever. I appreciate <laughs> that. <hi>. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, okay, folks, just real quick. If you enjoy or speed run or have ever viewed any seen, seen speed runs of Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, uh, Minish Cap, Donkey Kong Country, and many more, there's a good chance you have seen this person's work. Even if you haven't seen their tasks or their RTA speed runs directly. <laughs> um, Tampa, at this point, how many games have you tasked? I mean, it seems like the list goes on. Uh, well, I've started more games than I've finished, of course, but uh, I have 32 publications on the site for uh, in some of the same game, though. Right. And some are like obsolete runs. <laughs> but uh, how many games? Like I, I, 15, 20 games I've finished, tested of, I think. I, I don't really know, to be honest, but uh, around 20, I would say. When I think of all the time that goes into speed running and creating tasks and things like that, I just I, it has to be the same amount of time you've spent on these games as the RTA runners <laughs> and your. I mean, I know you were RTA with some runs as well, so just a yeah. uh, mind-boggling number of hours. <laughs> yeah, because of like the, the uh, how you make a task, it takes a long time to to finish them compared to an RTA run, for example. So they can take years to make. And I can't so, wait to get uh, yeah. into some of that and to learn some of that history and what it takes to do yeah. this. Um, first things first, let's start with the, kind of like your start in gaming. When did you, what did like some of your earliest memories of playing games and getting into games? Uh, first of all, I was born in 89. And uh, the first couple of years, I don't remember much, but uh, our neighbor had an NES apparently. And our cousin had an NES as well, but I don't remember those parts really. <laughs> but then I think it was like 94, Christmas 94, my brother got a Super Nintendo with Super All Stars and A Link to the Past. And that's kind of the start of it. <laughs> so, and then we bought uh, Donkey Kong Country and the Mickey Mouse Medical Quest and a couple other games for it. So, so around like the 4 out of 5. Would you say then the first time playing Mario 3 was probably the All Stars, or at least their first lo- long term experience w- with Mario 3 was in the All Stars version? Yeah, it was indeed, yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> was so it weird playing first. that and then playing the, the NES version? Um. I didn't really think of it at the time, I guess. Hmm. Um, as I, I, I did try the the NES version emulator, for example, oh. and my aunt had the NES version as well, but uh, I didn't really compare the two. And of course, I thought the SNES version was the superior one because it looks nicer <laughs> to me. It looks nicer, Back right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, today it doesn't matter really, but right, uh, right. <laughs> that's the one I'm used to. Then I started testing, I used the NES version because that's, that's the faster version and the original version. So that's the better one to use in general. Before you got into speedrunning or discovered speedrunning, did you primarily, I mean, had you played any games past like kind of the 16 bit era? Like, did you ever, were you a Nintendo 64 game? Did you ever, you know, go go that route? I'm just always curious if there's any 3D <laughs> gaming, I guess, in, 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 your, <laughs> in your history. Yeah, well, it started with the SNES. Then uh, my cousin had a Game Boy that I started to play a lot in. We play Zelda Link's Awakening, Tetris, and Super Mario Land 2. So I played that all the time. Um, he was living at my, my grandma's place at the time, and I woke up at like 5 a.m. in the morning and played the Game Boy nonstop <laughs> until the badges ran out, and I charged them, and I kept playing. Yeah. Uh, then I kind of skipped over the Nintendo 64 era. Uh, I, also, I only played Nintendo games ever. Hmm, okay. No uh, Sega or no Sony PlayStation or anything. If you don't mind me asking, was yeah. was Sega yeah. a thing in Sweden? Like, do, 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 was it as pop? Like, for here in the states, didn't, Sega was just as popular as the NES and Super Nintendo. So I'm curious if it had the same popularity uh, in Sweden. No, it didn't really. Like, like I didn't knew anyone who had an a NES hmm. uh, or Mega Drive, as we call it right. here. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, like, no, like I skipped over the complete. Like, I didn't know whether it was existing at all until 2000, I think. Oh wow! Uh, when I started using the internet and stuff. Yeah. So much uh, So no, it, it's completely skipped over me. <laughs> and NES is really big in Sweden in general. There are a lot of old school gamers who spend time with NES mainly. But uh, not Genesis. It was uh, anywhere. I, I got to tell you, I, I, I think there's 
very much this, especially at the early years of GDQ and things, there's just been this really strong contingent of speedwriters from Sweden. And it's kind of interesting mm-hmm. to track some of that history to get there. So let's start yeah. with you. What is kind of like, when, when were you first experienced or how did you discover this thing we call speed running? How did that, uh, how did you find out about something like that? Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Lynn Kayla, my sister. <laughs> hey. uh, anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was like uh, a lot of people first saw the uh, the test by Modern Moto of Super Mario 3. But uh, I actually think I saw an earlier test of that game that was released in 2001 by uh, Tukushin. Uh, he or she, I have no idea, did a 100% run of the game. And I remember watching it in school. It was like seven, eight parts of this video. I watched <laughs> right. it uh, during the breaks. Short clips, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, I can't remember. Like I think it was like... 2003 or something, 2002, maybe. Started watching that. And um, then I got home, like, I thought one day, hey, I want to try how fast I can beat Link's Awakening. Because that's what game I've been playing the most growing up, really. So yeah, I started one day and <laughs> I was sitting on the toilet when I started this run. <laughs> so, like, the most of the run was on the toilet. So good, uh, <laughs> nice fact. Uh, and I did, like, the way all of us play the game, pretty much. I didn't use any tricks from anyone else or whatever. And I got a time of one hour and 52 minutes uh, beating it. And then, like, about a year later, I find out about Speed Demons Archive and Twin Galaxies. And I then found out that the record was two hours and seven minutes. So without me knowing, I beat the record by 50 minutes, <laughs> uh, pretty much. And that kind of was the, uh, the start of it, I suppose. I found SDA in late 2004, and then I just uh, watched and was everything I could find on speedrunning. I got hooked instantly. Were you able to, you know, because not everyone had access to this, were you able to record any of your early runs and, and submit to SDA? Because it was quite a process back then in the, yeah. In the mid-2000s. Yeah, I had to use a VCR to, okay. to record runs. Um, I did start a few recording attempts of Donkey Kong Country as well as Link's Awakening. But uh, none of those two games I had any finished runs on VCR. But uh, the first run I finished was the regular seasons Zelda game, yeah, which was finished and uploaded on SDA on November two thousand five. Uh, so that's still up there on the site. It's really bad these days, but it's it's there. <laughs> it's the first one I got. I, I find that fascinating. The process that you had to go through back then, where you're mailing tapes, uh, you know, across the world, and, yeah, and, and all these things. Um, I, I also find it kind of interesting um, when you had finished or when you had done your first completed run that you recorded and everything. It wasn't necessarily the fastest time that also got published. It also had to look kind of cool. There were all these kind of other requirements for mm-hmm. it. And were you, did you feel at least like you had accomplished something, that first one that you actually got up on <laughs> SDA? Because not a lot of people are doing it at this point. Yeah. And back then, like, uh, gameplay standards were quite low, to be honest. Like, you could <laughs> do a really bad run, and people thought it was great still, because that's the only thing you had. You had nothing to compare it to. But graphic wise, like, uh, when you record a VCR and keep re-recording the same tape many times because you reset the segments. The quality, the quality it's kind of crap in yeah. the end. <laughs> totally. So it doesn't look that great, but it, it worked out, I suppose. Well, I'm glad we have uh, I mean, Was anybody else running Oracle of Seasons at the time? I mean... No, I was the first one who did a real-time run of it. Um, there was a task that was released pretty much the same time as I was, I was working on my run, but it was a really bad task for the time. Um which I later finished a better, better version of. But um, no, that, that was the first RTA run for for the seasons. So uh, there's no community around it. There's other people running the game. You maybe you mentioned that the task was, was somewhat you know limited in what it did. How did you go mm. about discovering and finding faster ways to beat the game? Because especially early on, if, when there's no community around it, it's got to be challenging. You're finding all this stuff by yeah. yourself. There was a couple, a couple of topics at STA for the Oracle games, both ages and seasons. And people are talking back and forth a couple of strategies. Uh, some people started trying doing runs, but no one ever finished anything. Um, so one day, one summer, I thought like, okay, I, I want to run one of these games. So I tried to play through them both and see if I could find anything. And um, Seasons was the only game I found like any kind of small tricks or whatever. So that's the one I, I picked. And um, But it mostly was just how I always played the game. I didn't practice too much. I just played it, it my normal way. Right. So, uh, like when I look back at it now, there's so many small bad things that <laughs> if I just didn't do more practice, I could learn so much better. Uh, but yeah, m- most of it was uh, my own work, I would say. Uh, 
some strategies and tips from the task, but not much. So, so yeah, I always find it interesting too that the, the tasks exist back then. What were the tools like to actually create a task? And when's like kind of the first time you felt like you digged in and, and tried some of these things from the tool assisted speedrun side of things? Yeah, the tools started in like, in like yeah, about 2004, really, when ta- tasking became a, a real thing. Um, back with the, the early start with the, the FAMTASA computer and a Famicom, hmm. uh, Famicom emulator, uh, you didn't have a frame advance that we have now as you could only play in slow motion. So you couldn't pause the run and do anything. You can just play really slow all the time. <laughs> and that's a bit uh, imprecise if you want perfection. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the things that improved later on with the... Uh, so when I started tasking, like all the tools I needed were there already, pretty much. Ah. Was it through uh, BizHawk or was it something else at this point? That was sort of something else. Okay. So uh, for NES, we have a FCU, ah. FCEU. Yeah, right. Right. Um, that later became FCUX instead. Yes. <laughs> and for SNES, we had a SNES 9X, which is still being used for real-time running at least. But for tasking, it's mainly only BizHawk these days. For like all platforms, more or less, the, and uh, the, the tools keep developing like better ways to, to do tasking optimally with scripts and stuff. But I, I like to stay it as old school as I can. Still, with things I don't like using scripts, for example, when I'm tasking. I'm doing it as manual as I can. Okay, you just that's add on like, like extra hours of work. It seems like by doing that, yeah, right? Yeah, indeed. Because I, I like the struggle that comes with it. I don't want like external programs to do my work. I want to struggle yeah. to find that perfect frame or that perfect R and or whatever. That's kind of the thing for me. So on a side note, SNES 9X was my first emulation, you know, experience back in the early 2000s. I remember mm. being in my college dorm and that was just, this was like the most amazing thing I could play Super Nintendo on my uh, my PC. Th- there's an interesting, I'm curious, you know, your own approach to when you actually started working frame by frame and some of these tools early on. Uh, were you trying to recreate things you thought you could do RTA or was this just trying to make the fastest version, uh, you know, of a speed run possible? I'm curious about that kind of like approach. Yeah, yeah. Uh- as I, mentioned, I finished one run uh, for record seasons, and then I want to do more runs, but uh, I didn't want to use a VCR again to record my runs, mm. and I didn't have uh, any money to get a better computer <laughs> and a virtual a virtual, uh, a capture card yeah. or whatever. So I started to look like for other things, speed and ways to record my runs, and then I looked into tasking more, then, yeah, maybe this is something I can do, because you don't need that much uh, stuff to do it. only need a computer that's decent, that not even decent, and then the emulator. And then you can test and record runs. So uh, that's kind of what's the start of it. And uh, for most of my tasks I've done, like I looked to to games like I played in my childhood and thought that I was pretty good at originally. So games like Donkey Kong Country that I've been playing so much growing up, that's one of my first I wanted to look into at the tasks. So it's kind of a combination of both. Like I wanted to see how how good the runs could be pretty much. That's the, uh, I yeah. think that's the, one, of, one of the things that, I, for, I mean, I, I think I'm trying to remember back to my own speed running experience and I'm pretty sure like yourself, the first speed run I ever saw was probably the task, uh, the, this SMB3 task, you know, from, I, I'm, I forget the, the, what was the, the tasker's name? I, uh, uh, Moto. My Moto. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it, just the, the, Im, how impressive it looked. That's always something that I've really enjoyed just how the cool things that you all figure out how to do and discover. And so I, I'm curious when that kind of like became a thing or has that always been a part of tasking? Because first of all, it, completing everything as fast as possible is super impressive in its own. But then all of the, fu- I mean, we're watching the on the screen right now is the SMB3 uh, uh, 100% task. And, mm. you know, there's all this dancing and all this crazy clipping and stuff going on. <laughs> and I'm, I'm curious, has that always been a part of creating, you know, a tool assisted speed run? Yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, Morobota Shun was released in 2003, and back then there wasn't really much testing to begin with. So, uh, but he did like these jumping on the cannonballs to get 99 yeah. lives, yes. which was really impressive at the time. Like, yes, the other How does he do it? <laughs> yeah, right. What's going on? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of been a thing since then, I suppose. Um, because it, as we, with the tools you're using, playing frame by frame and stuff, you have the, the, the time, the ability to make interesting things happen on the screen while you're waiting for an outer school or whatever. So uh, part of testing is not to always make it fast, but to me be entertaining and to uh, to show things that most people don't know about the game, like small glitches or whatever. So if you have t- time to sh- uh, time to show something interesting, then do it because it makes the 
the viewing experience more enjoyable in general. So that's kind of part of the rules as well as at the task videos to, to not only be fast, but to do something interesting as well. If you stand still for a second, like spin around or whatever, don't just stand still. Um, it can get out of hand sometimes though in some games, like if too much flashing on the screen or whatever <laughs> it might be. But um, even for a game like Gradius, which the whole game is an autoscroller, what can you do? Like do entertaining things the entire round. That's the only thing you can do. So uh, the attacher that only aim for entertainment and don't give, go for speed at all. <laughs> so uh, yeah, since the beginning, I would say for tasking really. That's pretty awesome, and that's pretty cool. I, I'm glad that that's part of it because it just it, it first of all it makes it really fun to watch, <laughs> but secondly it's, it just adds to the how impressive what we're looking at on screen is, and also for like an auto score in more about three. They're kind of boring to play as well, also the task. So oh, it's a way to entertain yourself as well. <laughs> so I, I'm having fun to come up with ideas to what to do while waiting. So it makes my experience more fun as well, not only for the viewer, but for the task itself as well. That's so great. Uh, so if you don't mind, why don't we, why don't we jump in? I, uh, the first one I wanted to ask about was Super Mario Brothers 3. And I, I know there's many different tool assisted speedruns you've been <laughs> a part of and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 is, is a game I've speedrun, so it's probably the one I'm going to f- be the most knowledgeable about, or at least know exactly what, what you, some of the things you're doing on screen. I guess mm-hmm. first things first, when when did you first attempt or start your first task for Super Mario Brothers 3? And what do you remember what category it might have been? Um... <laughs> I, first of all, I tried to do some RTA stuff for, for the game. Like uh, I used to write down my best level times for levels in a, on a paper yeah. for all the All-Star games. So I only had some experience speedrunning it. And um, we had a, a, an R- IRC channel that uh, some people joined in and had uh, uh, people on that channel joined in this project to test the Warpless category for Mario Bros. 3. And is this that was SRL something. or is this something different than before that? No, they, this is Task Videos uh, okay, RC gotcha. channel. They already got you. Okay. Back in uh, 2000. And... <laughs> I think that, that, that run was going on in 2007, I think, 2008, around that time. Um, but uh, back then, I didn't think, like, oh, this game is too popular, too big for me. I can't pass this. I don't know how to test properly. <laughs> but I'm still curious on following this project. And um, they kept uploading um, the progress on the channel. And I looked at it and, oh, this looks so cool. And I tried to improve it, but I, I was so bad. I couldn't do anything. Um, but I kept trying because I wanted to test the game because it was such a great game. And um, eventually, when they reached World 4, I looked into level 3-9. And I found a way to, uh, when you go down the pipe to the water at the end of the level, I found a way to, to, uh, to save one frame entering the pipe. And because of that, uh, like when you go into water, there's a frame rule. You can only accelerate every eight frame. Oh. And uh, thanks to saving one frame, I was able, able to save eight frames instead uh, when going into the water. And uh, after that, like I, I kind of joined the team to testing the game because I found that improvement. <laughs> and I think that was around 2007, 2008. I can't remember exactly. Mm-hmm. Um not to interrupt, but your timing couldn't have been more perfect. We just saw three dash nine on the screen uh, on the stream. Oh yeah, so. I, I've been watching that. Oh, <laughs> okay, nice yeah. I was like, this is like perfect timing. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize. So there, there were other people. There was like a team at this, or at least there's other people attempting some some doing some tool assisted speed running for for Mario three this time. Yeah, there was, there was like the uh, no wrong warp has been improved several times at this point. As uh, well, as warp has been I think it was two runs at the time already done. Hmm. Uh, so this was uh, the third time improvement. And uh, I think we were f- four people in the team, maybe five. Uh, I'm going to look up, actually. Yeah. So, th- But that was the first um, SMB3 and one I worked on. Uh, let's see. Oh, it was uploaded in 2010. So that was 2009 I started working on it then, I think. Uh, for the more about three. So uh, then I continued with the, the work where you exchanged the files back and forth to TAS on and uh, we eventually finished it and it was a lot of fun to work on the game. There are a couple of things I find fascinating. And before I get into them, I, I want to first of all, thank you for the commentaries that you've posted on your tool assisted speeder. Oh, those are my dogs. <laughs> Somebody just raped me about. Probably Amazon. But uh, so the first of all, if you haven't yet, folks, 
Tampa has, and, and others have done these really great commentary tracks for some of these uh, uh, tools to speedruns, which are super mm -hmm. insightful and helpful. That's how I did a lot of my research. But you mentioned at times the RNG manipulation. And in this case, a lot of that comes down to the Hammer Brother movements and trying to isolate them into you know the, the fastest possible movements. How exactly yeah. do you, what is the process of manipulating RNG when you're doing something like this? I find it fascinating. Yeah, the RNG is uh, like, it works differently depending on the game you're working on. In Mario Bros. 3, it's uh, basically a timer that starts with the power on the game and keeps changing every frame. Uh, there's nothing you can do to change the RNG, like uh, if I press A on frame 1 instead of 2, or whatever. So the only thing you can do is to either be faster or slower. So when you beat a level, for example, the Hammer Brothers are going to move. And uh, the only way to manipulate the movement is to either delay a frame or to be faster. So sometimes we have to stand still at the card and then wait wait to jump to grab the card to get a different pattern. Uh, we sometimes say, uh, you, most of the time, we also use like cheat codes to see if I can beat the level one frame faster, will I get a better result? And then you can see like, oh no, you need to beat the level 13 frames faster. Now, that's not going to happen probably. But if it's only one single frame, for example, then you might look into the level more to see if you can save that one frame somewhere. So you keep trying harder. As uh, sometimes you have to wait like ten frames to beat a level to get to, to get a good pattern, and that's bad to waste all those frames. Frames, but uh, sometimes you have to do it. It's hmm. yeah. So that's so a lot, that sounds like trial and error. So you're just trying out different. I, I I think of permutations math, but I mean you're just trying out different routes or different. Uh, uh, does Mario Brothers three play by a frame rule? I can't even remember at this point. Uh, there are many different kind of frame rules. Yeah, but. <laughs> Not like in uh, Marvel the Throne with the flagpole. Okay, it's not that. But uh, there are things like uh, uh, I mentioned that the uh, the game in water you can only accelerate every eight frame, and there are many different frame rules for eight. Like um, when you build up, the, build up the P meter, you do it every eight frame, for example. Uh, but it's not like when you beat a level that oh, you can only beat a level every two fifty six frames, like in Mario one. It's uh, so like most of the frames you do count for it for the final time. There, you know, you mentioned your sister earlier. She was putting something in chat, and 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 just like I'm curious how then you you end up discovering new things or or new ways to move through a, a level either slower or faster that you'll have to make up later. Um, are mm -hmm. these things where you're just you're just spamming buttons like mentioned in the chat <laughs> where you're trying? Things yeah, or... I mean it, that can indeed be one way to do it. Yeah, uh, but when you play the game frame by frame, and um, you can do things like yeah, but when did you do on console? It's not easy to to randomly hit the right frame sometimes, if you don't know that something's going to happen if you press that one frame. But when you can, when you have maximum control of every frame, it's easier to find things with a one frame perfection trick. Or you can like look into the code more easily to see what's going on in the game and how will the game behave if I do this and that. Yeah, so that way you can, you can like look at the code and know that like, this list is supposed to be working because how the code works in the game. Uh, but sometimes, like it's just spamming, doing random things, and random things will happen eventually. Like the, the more you play the game, the more you're going to find. Hopefully, when you mentioned you started the the, the first SMB three task two thousand nine and didn't get published till two thousand ten. Uh, during mm -hmm. that time, are you continuing to play the game RTA? Like, is are there things that perhaps you discover in you know a, on a real time basis, or is this mostly s discovering via you know <laughs> the frame by frame and putting in the inputs? Yeah, for that run, uh, I don't think we used any RTA references or anything. We just, level by level, we looked into level, like, how would you we logically beat this game, this level, as fast as possible? Um, something's kind of logical to uh, try to get the P-speed as early as possible, and you try to find out how do you do that on this level. And uh, that you, you can't really get any help from RTA at that point. Uh, so that's what the... Uh, yeah, looking into the level and trying to logical find out the best solution for it, pretty much. Uh, you've worked on uh, numerous Super Mario Brothers three tools to mm -hmm. speed runs, and what is it that makes you revisit it? Like, you know, it, what what is what? Because you have to spend a lot of time with this. So, what what is the final thing when you like? Oh, let's go revisit or let's look at it again. What's kind of that thing that <laughs> that puts you back in there to uh, to actually um, give it a try? Yeah, well, one thing I really dislike when tasking, or rather when the task is finished, when I look back at an early portion level and see like, oh no, I missed a frame there. And like, it's it's so painful to see when I know there's <laughs> things to, to do better. Um, but uh, 
sometimes like when you, when we tested vocals category, we uh, found new techniques to how to optimize the P speed better and uh, how to manipulate the uh, the sub pixels better or whatever it may be. That can also affect a different run. So when we did this uh, 2010 run for the War Plus category, we found ways to improve the new, no run warp category. Mm. So then we had to go back to that one and improve that one. So uh, and then like uh, for the no run warp, no run warp category, uh, there's like actually kind of frame rule with the RNG for Bowser. As there's like this which makes him uh, drop quickly when you kill him, and uh, to do that, he's making these small jumps when you kill him, when when you hit him, and you need the final hit with the fire to be at the same frame he starts a small jump, and for that to happen, you need a, a six jump pattern at the start of the uh, the fight, and that pattern is quite rare, so we can tell for the task like the whole task depends on when can we get the Bowser, can we get this pattern or not, and uh, for one of the tasks before it's like. Okay, we need to improve this run by seventy frames up to this point. Oh, how many? I can't remember the amount. <laughs> um, so when we started to look into it, like if you only find one frame to improve, there's there's no chance. We can't do that one frame. We need seventeen. But when you kept finding like small frames here and there, then they start adding up. And um, in the end, we had like only one or two frames, and that's kind of feasible to find, hopefully. So then you start looking harder to see if can we find these lost frames to to get the right Bowser pattern. And eventually we did for the deleted edition for the test. I mean, that but, process didn't uh, take forever. <laughs> How long did that yeah. take? I mean, we, we have improved the runs many times throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, doing the run itself doesn't take that much, that long, really, as we know the game already, how to test it optimally. But uh, there's a lot of research going in, going on behind the scenes. But uh, I can't really tell, like, <laughs> how long that took or whatever. It's hard to say for me. But, so it's- uh, so it's this combination, though, of, of the time that's been put in over the years and then in recent, you know, I got you. Okay, that's, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, from your commentary tracks, you make, you've made, mentioned on different uh, games that you've played, you keep notes and things like that. Is Mario 3 the type of game where, because I know you run at RTA as well, uh, do you have to, do you mm-hmm. still use notes when you're approaching it from, you, when you're doing with, working with the tools or is it something at this point where, <laughs> you know, it's uh, second nature? Yeah. Or... Uh. It, it, it can be good to make notes to see, like, uh, like oh, for this level, you have to uh, either lose seven frames for uh, optimizing the R&D pattern or save two frames. And uh, things like that can be good to, to write down, I suppose, even though we don't do it. <laughs> but uh, it can be good to have that data to know that, like, okay, I can save more time here if I save one more frame. I can save 10 frames instead of one frame. But uh, most of the time, like, it's either in my head or used for the, the memory watch that we are using that I can mention more. Uh, so I don't really need to write anything down. There's no no real planning to do for the task compared to like a big RPG, RPG game where you have to you know like, okay, when I'm in level 17 at this boss, I have this much attack power and I have to fight the boss in three rounds and lots of data you need to, to write down. But um, this game, more, it's not, it's not like that. You don't need to have anything, any knowledge like... Maybe like, okay, I need to have the firepower at this, this level, where it's the best place to get the fire flower. And I can maybe check that to calculate different levels to see the time differences. But uh, no, I, I don't really need any notes for anything. There's uh, there's this pretty, uh, there's a big Super Mario Brothers 3 community. And I know when you started this process over a decade ago, <laughs> mm. there, you know, their community wasn't that large, but there were people running the game. Is there anything that you've ever put in a Super Mario Brothers 3 task that you were like, I'm not sure runners will ever be able to do something like this, and then they actually did it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Many, many, many times. Uh, like, Especially at the, at the early stages of speedrunning, like when you find a one-frame trick, that's like, oh, that's impossible. No one can ever do a one-frame trick. <laughs> yeah. um, so back then, like, I found for, for like Donkey Kong Country, I found a couple of one-frame tricks. But I thought, like, eh, no one can ever do this in RTA in a way, so I won't even bother telling people because this is impossible. <laughs> so, so sadly, a lot of things I got lost because we didn't share all the information we had about uh, some tricks because we thought that they can't be done anyway. So I what's the matter? Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in the Mario 3, it's like a lot of different strategies for, like, how to build up the P-meter, mm. which is a very important part of speed on the game. And uh, some strats, it's like... Yeah, these are way too hard for our day. They're like, no, don't. 
<laughs> but then people like uh, Kirua, Mitzvah, Power and More have showed that, like, yeah, they can be done. It's uh, if, in, if you put enough practice into it, yes, a lot of the strats can be done. I know one of so, the. Uh, so I know it's weird to say this is an innovation, but one of the things was taking damage to keep your speed speed, and and that might actually be faster. I, I just remember that being a big deal, and I was like, you know, that was kind of uh, eye opening for a lot of runners, and it, it kind of changed the speed run. I mean, it really changed the whole thing at that point. Yeah, about that part of the taking damage, like uh, I mentioned, that the, there's an eight frame rule when you build up the P meter. Yeah. Um. So you need to run on straight land, and every eight frame starts getting up. But if you take hit on frame 8, for example, then even though Mario is standing still at the enemy, the timer still is running down to zero. So as soon as you start controlling Mario again, the P meter is instantly increasing. So by taking damage like that, you can um, build up the P meter with slightly less distance than you could without the enemy, without taking damage. And that would be used, used in a couple levels to save time in. At this point, uh, you, you've been uh, around Mario 3 for so long. Is there anything you'd still like to do or you'd still would would consider revisiting, <laughs> updating <laughs> your tasks for those games? Yeah, both the Warp Plus as, as, the one, as, the one, eh, as well as the 100% category have uh, improvements being worked on at the moment. Uh, not by me, though, but uh, there was a task called Mario who was working on both of them. He has uh, kind of disappeared for now, though. But it might be picked up by other people. And uh, I mean, I I love tasks in the game in general. I like the, the mechanics of the P meter and stuff. But um, I don't think I'll be going back to tasks in the main game again. Uh, I've been doing some uh, for fun categories like um, frog percent. We use a free sheet code <laughs> to only use the frog for the entire run. Uh, and I did a task with that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and I also started a task where you have to use the boost all the time. The Pegasus, uh, not the Pegasus, the Kariba shoe, which is only in uh, level 5-3 normally in the game, but I use the sheet code to have it all the time. Uh, and that gives me like a new way to test the game, like a new experience. Uh, so doing that was kind of, kind of fun. And I've also been testing a couple of modern ROM hacks. For example, uh, Miss Flower Power made a couple of ones, like the final Kaiso, which I did a test of. And... Um, but if I do like the, the, the same game again, like I've already done that so many times, there's nothing new in that way for me right. anymore in those games. So that's why I like to do different challenges instead. It's been fun watching some of your ROM hacks, not just of Mario 3, but some of the other games as well. Because I, I know Mitch's uh, Mini Kaizo World was, uh, mm-hmm. Mini Kaizo 3 was uh, more recently. And it's, uh, I'm glad that those interest you because they're really fun as a viewer to watch. <laughs> See, these yeah. really challenging games are then beaten in this most amazing, you know, unbelievable way sometimes. And, so. and the best part for me is to, uh, to see Mitch have his games broken. Like, how do you do that? Like, that's not <laughs> supposed to do it. Like, what it was fun going? to see his reactions to see you. To me breaking this game that's fun it's, it's a lot of fun and I, i'm glad you've all i mean so i i I'm just looking on your speedrun.com profile you've done some rta runs of mario 3 is it something you still want to continue mm-hmm. with rta wise or is there you know yeah I, I am doing it for fun like i don't want to be the best at the game or anything but it's fun to, to join in uh i normally do like weekly races on saturdays for example and we do like some off-screen off-stream races every now and then as well but um <laughs> One thing that's annoying when I do RTA stuff is like, I know how it's supposed to look when it's good. So I, I'm trying to match the task all the time when I'm speedrunning, and I, I can't do that. It's impossible for many levels. So when I'm trying to do, to speed on it normally, like I'm kind of being upset because I can't match the task. <laughs> so everything I do is like this is slow, this is bad. I'm trying to do the task strats, but I can't, so I'm losing even more time. <laughs> so I'm also too frustrated to do RTA most of the time. Because uh, I don't feel like I'm really that good at it anymore. I was better back in the day, I think. But I can, uh, I'm still having fun, at least. I can feel that conflict. That's got to be so frustrating when you've done things literally frame and pixel perfect. Yeah. You, there's no way you can do that, you know, as a as a actual you know, so real-time like, runner. I, I can feel it like, look at that tutorial, how to speed on the game. Because <laughs> those show the RTA strats, which, like, it's, supposed to, it's how it's supposed to run the game, really. But uh, I'm trying to watch my tasks instead of like these impossible strategies that I can't do, and it it just feels weird to me. 
Uh, I got to say, I'm obviously a pretty big fan of Mario 3 and the community and everything. And, and we're recording this in March of 2022. And the weekend races, some of them, it's been great getting on Twitch and seeing mm -hmm. the Mario 3 channel. There's been 30 runners, 20 runners. I mean, they've had some big races over the weekends. And it's been, yeah. it's just tons of fun to watch. And everyone's in a Discord call. You can't understand anything. It's, it's totally. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's chaos in the Discord channel all the time. Totally, yeah. Uh, but that makes it so much fun it's just a lot of fun seeing that people are interested. i mean even this game is you know uh i mean people have been speedrunning it now i mean frezzy man's i remember his from way back when, i mean people have run the game for uh, 15 years now it seems like maybe even longer yeah. and so the fact that people are still interested i think is pretty awesome <laughs> indeed it is yeah it's okay a great let's, game. let's move forward a little let's talk a little bit about uh zelda link to the past and i i didn't realize that this there's a when was this i'm, I'm putting on the test right this one was just published like within the last year or so am i getting that right or maybe it's two years uh, could be uh, uh, actually the closest stream so i don't know which one it is uh it, it's the one that uh, you and let's see was anybody else working on this one i can't even remember uh where did i get this one give me just one second while i <laughs> <laughs> i'm popping pause, on the stream to see. pause um it's, pause, pause, pause. it was in 4k which i was like really surprised that it was even uh oh yeah they have a re-uploading a lot of tasks lately that's, oh, uh, oh, oh this one i think is from 2009 isn't it is this one from like 10 yeah, years yeah. ago okay correct yes got it cool so the uh, first of all let's talk a little link to the past because uh so many if you go to the leaderboard you can see how many people love this game it's it's got mm. a gajillion category extensions oh, i yeah. think there's over a thousand runners or a thousand you know there's way over thousands of submissions and um this is perhaps one of the most popular speed runs of all time we can just put it out there <laughs> you mentioned your earlier mm. time with the game uh what was it like working on or finally spending some time and in deep diving into a tool assisted speed run with link to the past yeah it was a yeah a challenge uh, to be sure, because uh, uh, like Mother 3 or anything, I thought like A Link to the Past is way too big of a game for me to test. Like, I can't do this justice. Um, so uh, I was uh, like browsing the, the forums at test videos, and people were t restarting the test. A lot of people tried to start test this game. Wow. And uh, like, I followed in the community and uh, read everything. And people said I added some strategies on my own and stuff. Uh, but people kept like, uh, Kept restarting the tasks, they kept giving up, and no one took the time to actually finish one. Uh, there were actually two two tasks finished back when back then for the game, but the people were trying to improve them because all the new things have been been found. But uh, no one ever did, so I thought like, ah, I can try, I guess. <laughs> uh, so I started testing it in, uh, I think it was August two thousand eight, I believe. Yeah, something like that, August. And uh, I started working on it, and it it took me about six months to finish, I think. And uh, yeah, but first the first thing you need to do is like understand how the mechanics work in the game and testing, as it's a bit different compared to RTA, for example. So you you spend a lot of time learning how the game works, and uh, as well as when testing, you keep finding new ways to improve your gameplay. So. Uh, but I reached quite far into the run. There were so many things that I found to improve the early parts that I wanted to redo everything. Oh, yeah. And um, I kind of restarted it a couple of times as well. Oh, but uh, at one time I thought, like, no, I, I can't keep restarting. I have to finish this anyway. So I kind of asked the community, like, do you want me to continue? Do you want me to restart? And people were like, okay, do what you want, but I don't want to see this restarted because it might not ever get finished. <laughs> uh, so I kept going anyway, and... Uh, Eventually, I beat the old task by about four minutes, I think. Oh, wow. That's huge. Um, at the time. Uh, a lot of things came from new new things, new glitches and stuff. Uh, some that I found, some that others found. But uh, most of the time, like it's the small things that add up. If you save one frame every one second, that's a lot of time in the end that you save oh, yeah. total. So, uh, and I'm kind of... They used the term frame whore a lot for me. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to the, I'll go into that history later. Yeah. But uh, I keep trying, like, if I if I think I can save a frame, or know I can save a frame, I want that frame to be saved. Like, there was once a, a, a room, I spent about two weeks on that room alone, because I know knew that one frame could be saved, because I, <laughs> uh, I tried to manipulate some enemy movements, and I delayed one frame to... Um, to get the pattern that I wanted. But I knew that I don't need to manipulate them, to waste a frame to manipulate them. So I kept trying and trying different ways. And uh, back then, I didn't really understand the R&D that much in the game. So I, I, it was just 
spamming buttons, as my sister said, like a five random things and see what happened. <laughs> yeah. But uh, eventually, I did find the frame. I did find the improvement. And to me, like that's so sort of personal satisfaction to uh, to, to struggle that far that long, and uh, in the end, you actually find what you were looking for. But uh, everyone else, like if you watch that task, that room, like no one is going to see, like, oh, you saved one frame there, you saved a frame. <laughs> It's impossible to see for the naked eye. Sure. So um, it's it's just something for me, like for my own good. Like I can feel like, ah, oh, yeah, that room. Yeah, yeah. I, I stayed a frame there. So that's that, like so nice. That's so interesting and insightful about your approach that that's the kind of thing. And I think that's, by the way, what makes um, tasking so interesting and unique is that those of you that have this kind of dedication to it that one frame yeah. is important to you that's the reason you're doing what you're doing right indeed so, but it, uh, that kind of become a problem when the <laughs> i was working on uh, uh bubble bubble tasks this was in the 2009 era and uh, we were like 10 to 15 people working on it back and forth because it was going to be a big product that's like everyone may join in and do a do a level yeah there's tons of levels i mean <laughs> yeah i know and I did put quite a lot of work in that in that game, but the problem there was like most of the people in the team they wanted to continue the task to uh, to finish it, but I kept finding now oh, we can save a frame at level thirty six. We need to go back five levels, so I kept like working backwards all the time to uh, to make my team really upset for it because I I wanted to do I wanted to keep going like if I knew something can be better I wanted to be better, so I kept going backwards and uh, that's when I came became like the frame whore. <laughs> because I was whoring every single frame of the run. And that's why the concept of save the frames came from that run. I don't think it was a thing either. I, I couldn't find any information to save the frames before we worked in that run. Bubble, bubble. So I kind of started the thought? whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, so, so eventually I had to give in. Like, okay, I, I won't redo this level right. again. Let's keep going because we will never finish otherwise. So uh, when I look at the task now, I see like several levels that you can improve a few frames on. But the team didn't let me, and I wasn't allowed to improve them. <laughs> but I understand as well. Like it, it's easier to uh, to finish a run and then go back to it to improve it uh, because you have something to compare it to right. than to try to do everything perfect the first time. So, like I, I understand why, but uh, it it hurts my soul. <laughs> it hurts. Oh my gosh! Also, like, one thing, I, I'm using my Taskbot uh, shirt for the the hey, stream occasion. Hey, Taskbot! <laughs> I, I think that, you know, I, I had to. I gotta tell you, I think that's so relatable because we feel, I think the, I mean, you, you RTA, so you know this as well. Like there, there's never a run you're satisfied with. Uh, maybe the Mario one folks are coming close because they're, you know, they're basically this close to, you know, saving their last frame or mm-hmm. that they're aware of knowing. Uh, but outside of a game like that, where you, you know exactly what the specific amount of time you can save is, there's always time on the table and it, it, it's totally yeah. relatable. They're like, oh man, I, it's painful. Cause I knew I could have done this and I could have, you know, <laughs> made, made the run faster. That's the whole point of speed running. Indeed. Yeah, so like I, for task, you can you can actually see like yes, this can be improved by five frames. But yes. RCA, like you, you can't know how when perfect is perfect because it's too hard to tell most of the time. But for task, you can actually find out the absolute perfection, which is kind of the goal. Yeah, the absolutely. Uh, a couple of quick questions for you. I guess the first mm-hmm. one with Link to the Past. Um, you mentioned that there were there were some there were a, a community around some of the trying out some of the task stuff. Was there a community yeah. RTA wise? Was there a lot of people running? I mean, back in the late aughts, <laughs> were there were there people ready this game? Was there any of that kind of thing happening? Uh, there were a couple of runs. Yeah, uh, one is uh, Michael TSA Damiani. He did uh, like every seller game. Uh, eventually, found out that his runs were spliced, but that's a side note. <laughs> but uh, he was the, like the, the, the main the main focus in the seller speedrun community for a while. And um, there's also this guy from Twin Galaxies called uh, Rodrigo Lopez, who did a lot of runs as well. But uh, at Twin Galaxies, you can't see any runs. You can right. only see the time in the end. So that's kind of kind of sad. Yeah, kind of bummer. Uh, but he had some top-level runs as well. Uh, but uh, back in the old SDA days, like people kept talking about making runs, but very few did make runs. Mm. Because it wasn't so hard, so easy back then. There was no streaming. There was no capture cards, pretty much. You had to record a VCR, put it back online in a struggling way. Uh, there was also no, no YouTube at the beginning. Like, there was no good place to host videos. So when you look at the SDA forums, like, like, oh, I finished a run, and there's a link, and all links are dead now. Like, you can't find any old runs because the sites are gone, long gone. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there, there were some runners, yeah, but it wasn't as big as today, of course. 
it's painful for those of us that do research or that really enjoy kind of like seeing how the progression happens. And I'm thankful for yeah. folks like summoning salt and others who are able to track down some of this <laughs> stuff, because that's kind of the only way we, some of these runs are being preserved or being, being able to be seen, uh, yeah. you know, because as you're saying, there was no YouTube, there was no, <laughs> there was no place to mm-hmm. host these videos. <laughs> I, and it sounds like, I mean, you, you could speak better on this, that, you know, a lot of the stuff was being shared through either IRC or, or forms, you know, on, on an online form somewhere. They think that's the only way mm. you could share strats, right? Indeed. Uh, so then with getting back to Link to the Past, then for uh, uh, there's another your your commentary on this was super insightful. And you talked about your actual pathway and where which pixels you step on and stuff influence some of the RNG that might happen from, you know, enemy patterns and other types of mm. things. How was that discovered or, or is this the infancy of kind of like some of those discoveries to, to push the game faster? Yeah. Like uh, when you go in a room, you can go, for example, if you go straight left and straight up, you get the same time as if you go diagonal, but if you can get different, um, different enemy patterns, if you do so, so like depending on how you, how we do the room, I found out like oh the enemies change the patterns like, so I kept I kept like changing my movement different ways to still reach the same spot but doing different paths to it, and uh, then small things that, for example, if you hold down the A button, the R and D is going to change. Uh, so even though you don't have the boots, if you spam A, it doesn't do anything in the game, but it changes the R and G. That's kind of a free way to to change it. Uh, that is always like delay a frame or uh, save a frame. That's not always a good thing to save time uh, to to manipulate the RNG. And for uh, the uh, Aghanim fight, um, the easiest way there is to, to stand still and charge the sword, charge up. And every four frame you have the sword out, the RNG is going to be changed because of the um, the glimmering from the sword changes the randomness. So I just stood still and waited four frames and release the sword and see if I got a good pattern. No, I didn't. Then I reload and like used it for more frames, etc. It's a kind of laser way to do it. That's, uh, <laughs> you don't lose any time standing still in those, those fights. Uh, but most of the time, it's just trial and error. Uh, I mentioned at the start that you can use like scripts, Lua scripting, to find out that like in in 16 frames, the, you will have this RNG value, and the move, enemy is going to move like this. But uh, I don't do that at all. I just wait those seventeen frames and do things manually to see what's going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, so, so you, you can technically really... improve the process. Wow! So you're trying instead of scripting something like that to try out different types of things, you're actually literally running that those sixteen frames or seventeen frames over and over again to try out something different. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that just seems like it would take forever. Yeah, so the, the, that's more enjoy- enjoyable for me to do. Yeah. Instead of letting the script uh, help me in the process, but uh, there's only so much you can do. As a human, you need the external help to make absolute perfection, and uh, sometimes it's just unnecessarily time-consuming to do to do what I do. But uh, it's it's more fun to me, and that's like I'm passing for fun. So uh, for me, it's better to do it that way. Uh, I'm I'm right there with you. Uh, when I speed run, it's 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 almost I don't want to say relaxing, but it's very uh, that that's what I enjoy uh, the failure over and over again <laughs> to have those successes. There yeah. are some interesting things that happen in in Link to the Past, and I. I'm curious what made you think or tr- why try some of the things you've done with the D-pad and some of the movement stuff you do. Like there are times where you see Link, mm-hmm. you know, moving back and forth mm-hmm. very fast or also b- bouncing off bridges, things that just didn't, wouldn't look, they look abnormal. And I'm curious why try some, like how did you discover some of those? Why even think to try some of those? How did that, how does that happen? Uh, most of the movement strategies were kind of used in the, the previous tests, oh, Cool, but I just kept doing them. And, um, uh, uh, for example, the, the wobbling is done by holding left and pressing right every second frame, or holding up and pressing down every second frame. And um, I guess I kind of discovered to like when, when you play on console, you can't really press press up and down at the same time. So you have to do it on emulator to find out. And then you notice in the game that oh, strange things are happening if you do this. Like if you go hold left and right to go into the doorway, the game is glitching up, and the, the scrolling gets messed up. And um, then people guess. Go went frame by frame by frame to to sort of like this wobbling technique, and see what happens. And then you find out that like, hey, Link is actually moving faster when you do this. That's because when Link is moving to the left, for example, he's moving in a four frame movement cycle. It's going two pixels, one pixel, two pixel, one pixel, and then repeat. And um, if you hold left on the same on the first frame, it's going two pixels. But if you hold left on the second frame, it's going one pixel. 
but instead you hold left and right on the second pixel. This means Link is turning around, and for that frame, you're moving two pixels as well. So instead of going 2, 1, 2, 1, you go 2, 2, 2. So you speed up quite a bit. And uh, this technique can only be done when going left and up, though. And um, for RTA, you can do this in a different manner because you're not allowed to press left and right at the same time. But if you're walking against the wall, like you're walking up against the wall, you can hold up and then press right into the wall and you can get the same speed as well. So that's why you see a little pause runners. They kept, they kept tapping the, uh, the D-pad all the time, pumping to say these small frames every here and there. I, um, and then there some... are things like... Yeah? No, 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 please, go, finish. Go for and it. things like... Uh, when you hold uh, left, right, and up at the same time, uh, when you do that when going upstairs, you can do uh, some funny things as well. Or when you go into doorways, like in the, the church, the center, just so you can speed up as well. Because uh, as games aren't, as you, you're not meant to play press left and right on the controller at the same time. So mo- most games aren't made to uh, to take that into, into account, I suppose. So uh, as, as you can't test what happens when you press left and right when testing the game. Uh, then you don't know that they don't like to fix those problems because you don't know about them. But when you play an emulator, you can find out that oh, the game is glitchy when you press left and right. So I guess that's uh, one of the reasons why those glitches exist in the first place because the developers couldn't couldn't test, couldn't know what happens. That's just me theorizing, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Just try exactly. Yeah. You mentioned some things that you're able to do in the task that you can't do on console. When the process or the when when console verification came about, did that make you consider changing some of your approaches, or did that influence at all your the the way that you approached a tool assisted speedrun? No, as a even though you you can't really press left and right on the console at the same time, controller the game still accepts those in, inputs. The console can still accept them, and there are some controllers that are so worn out that you can press left and right at the same time. So, like, if you will console verify my run, it's going to be, it's going to work out. Like every glitch and everything I do in that works on console as well. So I haven't really done anything differently to to make it sync on console. I uh, if it works on the emulator, that's normally good enough for me because most emulators, at least these days, are good enough to compare to console. Yeah. But there's some ones like uh, CSNES, for example, in an old SNES emulator. It's uh, really bad on emulating, for example, loading times and lag. So uh, something you do in that emulator, that's not going to sync on console because it's so inaccurate. It, but for later emulators, it's, it's fine. I, I, my mind gets blown at how accurate emulation has gotten when simulating. I mean, the literally the yeah. I mean, lag frames and all these this stuff that I just wouldn't even think is possible, the way that it's able to do that. Uh, it's why we can accept you know emulated runs on a lot of leaderboards because it's, yeah. it's very close to what the... Uh, but the it's... Uh, there's a common like uh, uh, what's the word? Bleh. Common talk about like, are we going to allow emulators on this leaderboard at all? Like emulators for consoles, which one is the best? And um, the thing is like, a lot of consoles can be quite different as well. Uh, like there's some categories for speed, as like uh, Dragon Quest, where you have to sh- uh, chill down your console or heat it up at a specific temperature <laughs> to have the processor <laughs> running at a, at a different speed or whatever. Oh, it's so unreal. Yes. It's like even though even though you're like your consoles cause of aids, it's going to be different. It's going to take longer to load if it's it's bad or whatever. And uh, like disk systems, like the PlayStation Two has a lot of different oh, the loading buttons. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, earlier versions of it are worse than the later ones, but they're still tracked on the same console, even though the loading times can be quite big. Uh, or for like the, the the Wii, for example, there was a lot of talk about the, the fast Wii. <laughs> in speedrunning, yeah, because it was faster, uh, faster loading times than the, the normal ones. Uh, but an emulator, though, when you have the frame count on emulator, that's going to be accurate on every single computer, uh, as long as you use the, the same, same same settings, and that's easy to emulate. So, uh, like, you, you can't always compare two consoles, but you can always right. compare two emulators to be accurate. <laughs> so that's like. It's a strange debate to me uh, that way because, of course, consoles are supposed to be the, the prime thing, the the uh, the main thing on the leaderboards, but they can't be trusted either to, uh, all the time. 
That is such so, a good point, Tampa. Uh, I primarily run games on a console called the TurboGrafx-16, and there's there's five different variants of the PC Engine. And when you're playing Castlevania Rondo of Blood, the the discs, the CD system for the PC Engine was one of the first ever. So the loading times vary from run to run. I mean, I, I see sometimes you know it'll take me five minutes, so not five minutes, but it takes a very long time to load up the, yeah. because it's changing tracks. It's you know it's seeking. It's all this stuff Indeed. that's unpredictable. It's not the same amount of time every time. So. We can fix uh, that like, <laughs> Yeah, precisely. But, but but things like the uh, the heat on the processor, like I don't think that's you can why. emulate that in any way. <laughs> I don't even know how um, you would do so that. So that's like, so are emulates accurate or not? Like you, you can't emulate these specific heat control things. Or like it was, I think, uh, oh, I can't remember the game, but I saw like a, a small documentary about the uh, a specific glitch that, that only worked on some consoles apparently. And there was one time like he... He was taking his uh, the uh, the disc back and forth on the console, and it got really greasy, and that apparently uh, reduced the loading times <laughs> the console because it, it was a greasy <laughs> disc. It's like a whole case is like a greasy disc, and then you save two minutes in the run. Like there's so many small factors in the the debate. Like when they talk That's, about the accuracy. I mean that if that doesn't highlight some of the. I don't know what to say. I don't want to say silliness, but like, so, you know, there, 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 some of the, there are some parts silly. of the art. Yeah. It's just, that are just kind of silly, right? Like <laughs> fucking grease. What the hell? Okay. Uh, before we move on past link to the past, I do want to ask, um, you know, it, it, what is it about the game that you enjoy? And is it something that you can still get enjoyment out of today? If you play it casually or play it as a speed run? Yeah. The, the, I the post was one of the first games I played because my, my brother bought it along with the SNES. So it has always had a specific spot in my heart. Uh, it's one of the best games I know. Yeah. So uh, th- th- that's kind of the, the thing of why I want to start testing the, ga- testing the game in general, because I know the game, I like the game. It's fun to uh, to struggle with the game, to uh, challenge myself to improve my gameplay, uh, my testing. And also the like the... There's so many small things, small glitches and movements and stuff in the game. It's fun to experiment with and try to research the game, how it works, and and so on. Uh, so it's like the the enjoyable part for me. It's a it's a game that continues to engage folks. I mean, you can just you can turn on Twitch any time of day, and you'll see somebody's running something linked to the past. It might be randomizer, it might be yeah, yeah. Uh, RTA speed, or, you know, might the different category and stuff. It's it's a game that doesn't seem. I don't know how to say this, but we haven't solved it yet. It seems like there is always going to be, t- even from a tasking perspective, it seems like there's yeah, yeah. there's always frames we're still going to find in this game. <laughs> and, and there have been so many new glitches and things. Like back when I was tasking the game, and there's like a few years after that, like I was the, the kind of the expert of the game, I suppose, in, <laughs> in some one way. Uh, but now, like I feel like I don't know anything about the game anymore. There's so many big glitches, like I, I can't understand them. But it's so interesting that that people keep finding new things and. Uh, they get too complicated for me after a while, but uh, it's so fascinating to see. It's still evolving all the time, new things constantly. I, I, I'm thankful that we have this task. It's one of my earliest memories of speedrunning was was seeing you SMB three and your link to the past be, uh, tasks. And so it's obviously I've got this nostalgia thing for it. But it's mm. I know that I don't think we'd be where we are today with link to the past speedrunning if it wasn't for a lot of the work you did, but also that the community did uh, from you know moving throughout over the last fifteen years or so. It's just kind of amazing to see where the game's at now. <laughs> yeah, um, it has grown a lot. I'm not. We're not going to talk about it, but oh. I do. I, actually, we'll talk about it real briefly. Uh, your Minish Cap speedrun uh, task mm-hmm. is, is awesome. Uh, how long did you spend with that, and what was kind of the process? I guess just you know, <laughs> Ooh, um, that game. It, it, kind of the same case as when I started Link to the Past. Like there was no the Minish Cap task, and several people had tried to do it, and I thought like, okay, I'll give it a shot then. And uh, that took me 11 months to finish my first task of the game. Um, and back then, like. It takes a long time, both because I'm such a whore <laughs> in that frame, <laughs> frame horror, to say that frame. So I keep testing the same thing over and over again. Um, but like some days I don't test at all, but and some days I test for like 12 hours nonstop back then. Um, so it, it's quite a lot of fun to test, to make the first test of a game. Like when no one has done it, there were some speedruns before, but no tests. So you have to come up with every strategy on your own, and that's kind of fun to do. But it's also hard to do because you won't be able to get everything right the first time. As mentioned, when when you keep testing the same game, you you got to learn how to control your character character better. So when you end the task, the start of the task is bad in comparison. So um, 
a few years later, I did a new task of the game. I teamed up with the, the speed on the co QO. I can, I can never pronounce his name. <laughs> and we did a test together. And that, that was in the works for about two years instead of the 11 months that the last one took. Uh, because he has tasked the game alone up to the end of the second dungeon, I think. Uh, and then I kind of said, like, there's so many things to improve in the earliest test. Like, let's restart the whole thing and I'll join you pretty much. So we restarted the run from scratch and we did everything. And we saved so much time, so many new things in the category. And uh, yeah, about two years for that one. And then I said, like, I, I will never test this game again unless there's a way to skip the flippers in the game. And the thing, like, every time I finish the test of Diminus Cap, there's a guy called uh, Toadswoot. He kept finding new things in the game. Like, oh, here's something just to save two minutes. Have fun. <laughs> two minutes? Oh, like, no. okay, <laughs> back to it again. And uh, since my last test, there have been so many new things in the game. So the RTA speed is actually faster than the test right now by quite a lot. And I am working on a new task at the moment. I have been for a, for a couple of years, really, but I keep redoing and I keep losing interest. So I like, for like a year straight, I had no motivation at all to keep going with the task. Because, um, like, both because my, my general tasking motivation has, has dipped quite a bit. And, uh, like, when we get stuck in some place, like, okay, this is room with enemies, I have to kill four of them. Bad RD, bad RD, bad RD, constantly. And, like, sigh, yeah, like you give uh. up pretty much because it's so tiresome to do, do the same thing. And then people in the community keep finding new things, so I have to redo and redo and redo. Like, I normally don't mind redoing, but it's, it takes a toll on you. You can't redo as much. But uh, I'm still working on it on and off. And uh, I did some work on it today, actually. But, uh, like, I didn't get anywhere. But I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> The, and plus, uh, on top of that, you've been facing these pro, you know, these issues for four, you know, fourteen, fifty, however many years now. So I can imagine that <laughs> you put that yeah. all together. You mentioned something that I think is is kind of really interesting, actually, mm -hmm. and that is that the probably with any task, the end of it is always going to be better than the beginning because you've learned so much through the process. It's kind yeah. of interesting with RTA. It's kind of the opposite where a lot of times we've played the first level over and over <laughs> and over again, you know, so, and by the time we, we vote, we, we don't need, we don't have the same amount of reps <laughs> at the end of the game that we do at the beginning. That's, that's kind of an interesting thing. So I, I, I imagine that you could probably always go back and revisit the beginning of a task, but that's, that, that could be, that's such a challenge. I mean, that's could be yeah. frustrating. I would imagine. There are some ways to, uh, to change the inputs in an earlier part without redoing the whole task. Uh, as when you make a task, all your inputs are saved like in a separate file. And you can open that file and edit, like if I want frame 1000 to be A instead of B button, I can save that. And when I replay the task, it's going to be changed. Uh, but the problem then is uh, when it changes early things in a task, then the values are going to be different. So the run won't sync up the same way. Like the RD is going to be different, uh, or your sub pixel position is going to be different, or whatever it may be. But uh, in many games, like when you use a save and quit, all those values are going to be reset. So even though it's maybe like oh, two hours back into the test in the early beginning, if it's just before a save and quit, I can probably redo that part and then sync the rest of the test back into the into order. That's your checkpoint. So uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> checkpoint pretty much. And sometimes you can do that with other, like even though. Uh, like some games, the RD isn't that heavy. So you, you can save like 10 frames in early part and have it sync up anyway. But uh, for most games, it's going to not be a thing. It's going to be a struggle. But um, for the minis cap, I've done it many times, like right before saving quits. Like, okay, I can redo this part because I know I can fix it. I can solve this and keep going. But other times, like, oh, I did a mistake on frame 10. Yep, redo the whole thing from the beginning or ignore it. So it's like, when does it like. When it's proven too big to ignore, right? Like if there's like two frames to save in a two-hour game, that's like, ah, eh, that's nothing. Who cares? Right. But when it's two minutes in a two-hour, uh. then like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't ignore this. Like it's, it's really bad, especially like when you finish a run and the improvement is so big that RTA runners are going to improve the task instantly because of that big new improvement. Right. So then, like, like I, I can't have this. Like, uh, I refuse to, <laughs> so I have to redo it. So that's like, these days I haven't been finishing many, many tasks, both because like my motivation hasn't been the same as it used to be, 
and because it, it takes me too long to do it because I wanted to do to make it perfect. And um, I kind of make this uh, this my third minus cap task to be my final task ever was the kind of plan when I started it <laughs> because I wanted to like okay this is it I want to quit this now and yeah. have it grand finale. Uh, and the plan was to submit this uh, submit it this J- July eighteenth this year because that's the the fifteen year anniversary for my first task when it was finished. Whoa! But um, because I have to keep redoing the task all the time and I'm not go- getting anywhere, I don't think I'm going to make that time. As I have a lot of a lot left in the game and only four months to do it, so I don't think it's going to be feasible. But uh, that was the plan when I started, at least. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm thankful and shocked, shocked and surprised that you're still even putting <laughs> the time. And because uh, I, I don't speedrun Minish Cap, but it's I love playing it. I I think it's one of the best Game Boy Advance. Games. I think it's it's just a really great Zelda. I love Zelda. Zelda's my favorite yes, series. Yeah. So it's just the fact that you're spending time with it, and uh, I you know. I know that kind of effort and work doesn't go uh, unseen. Uh, the community I know is forever thankful for what we get from tasking mm-hmm. and things like that. So, whenever you f- finish it, that'll be awesome. If you ever do, you know, I mean, well, it's, uh, one day, one day, one day, right? You know, there's no rush on it. Um, I, I guess let's you know let's move into our last one then. Here we're getting to some Donkey Kong Country, and I just wanted to share my little personal experience really quick, and that is. Mm-hmm. I only had an NES and I had a TurboGrafx-16 growing up. My parents, super thankful we had those. But so the Super Nintendo and all the things that were happening on it, I had to go to my friends' houses to play them. And Donkey Kong Tur- Country was just one of those games where mind blown. It was. It felt like this completely new thing. Uh, it looked different. It played different. It had so many mm. wonderful things going with it. Uh, I'm curious about your first experience with Donkey Kong Country and what led you <laughs> down the path mm. to spend so much time with it. Yeah, we... If- First bought it in, I think it was 95, summer 95. Um, me and my brother, we have a, my, my birthday is July 18th and he has a July 20th, so two days apart. So we wanted to buy a game for ourselves. So we stood like in the, in the shelves and looked at the games. And uh, uh, I'm not sure if it was the same day or different time, but we had played the, the game like uh, a test gaming stage or whatever you call it. Oh, yeah. To try the game out in the kind of a demo station. Yeah. So I played the game a bit before and we enjoyed it. So we decided to buy it. And they really loved the game instantly. Like we played it so much growing up. Um, and already back then, like when you play a game uh, too many times, like you get better and better at it. And you, you kind of make it faster by, uh, uh, by, by, by what was the word? Uh, I mean, eventually you're growing to making things faster because you're better at it. So oh, yeah. you know the game. You improve on the game, already. yeah. Yeah, improve the game, yeah. And uh, when I first found speedrunning, like DKC was one of the games I looked forward to was a speedrun of, and it was so enjoyable. And when I uh, went to task videos, there was also tasks of the game by Arne the Great. And uh, he was from Sweden as well. So uh, I contacted him like, oh, I loved your task. Like, uh, oh, also at this time, I tried to speedrun the game. So I like, asked him to have uh, uh, some tips for me, I suppose. And we discussed some strategies. And... Uh, I think this was in 2000, maybe late 2005, early 2006, not sure when it was. Uh, and I started talking to him quite a lot uh, on the MSN Messenger and Skype or whatever back then. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> AIM we kept, uh, yeah, we kept uh, like talking for hours and uh, playing the game. And eventually we uh, decided to uh, to make a task together because he had done both an N percent task as well as the 101 percent task. And uh, the one hundred one percent task was the older one, so we wanted to improve that one. And that was uh, we started working on that on May eighteenth, two thousand seven, I think it was. Um, and uh, at the start, like we, we did it both at the same time, like we we both tasked the game, but eventually he lost interest, so I kept going on my own. Uh, but that run ended up taking ten years to finish <laughs> from when it started because. Uh, both we kept improving, like finding new things all the time, many small things. So I redid the task from scratch. Wow. I think it was nine times. Oh no! Nine eight times. It's heartbreaking. And um, I kept switching emulators as well. So we started on, t- on uh, SNES 9X 1.43, which is a really old and bad version. Then I switched back to uh, SNES 9X 1.51, and then I went to Bishock in the end. Um, and it was this level, Crocodile Chase, level four four. That became a roadblock both times. I go into that detail later on. And uh, I got up to that point. I couldn't test the level because it was such a hard glitch that we did. 
So I uh, stopped working on it for quite a while. And when I started working on it back again, I restarted from scratch in oh. the beginning. So uh, twice when going up to that level, I restarted or gave up. So, uh, but the each time I was starting, it was so much better because I understood the game better. We found new tricks. So it ended up being faster and faster every time. Uh, so it was really good to do so. But uh, I eventually I finished it on, on May 18th, 2017, exactly 10 years from when we started the game. I submitted it to test videos. And um, that was so great for us because I, I've been struggling for 10 years with that game. Of course, I took like breaks for several years, but still. And it was so nice to eventually have it finished. And I was so happy with that run. I still am. I think it's one of my best works yet. It, it's uh, I, I, I don't want to oversell it, but it, it, just watching <laughs> it, it's pure joy just watching the thing because everything is so... It just looks amazing on screen. You mentioned you restarted nine times, which, by the way, is I heartbreaking was every time you've said that. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> what, what the, so were there new discoveries for you in the movement, in just the glitches and, and the things that people have been discovering other places? What, what were the things that you know decide, you decided to end up restarting the task? Uh, like every kind of thing, pretty much. Uh, back then, like all the work was done by me and Arn, um, more or less everything. And we kept having these long Skype conversations about the tri- trick that we found, and we kept changing ideas back and forth. Um, so, like, we learned new things from. We, like, one time we were playing a death play game, and we found a new glitch called the jump roll, which is, uh, happens when you, you land on an enemy in the same frame as you roll, and you're going to keep rolling in midair. That was fine, but by a pure accident in a death play session we did. And that's like, oh, wait, we can use this in the run as well. So we kept looking for places where to use it. And we scouted the whole game everywhere we could find. And of course, like, they had to redo the task because, like, we have this new glitch now, so let's redo the whole thing. And then uh, a while later, I found out a glitch to uh, to instantly, uh, not instantly, to, to keep rolling on the ground. As you see on the task right now, Link, Link, Diddy or Donkey is <laughs> <laughs> <it's> rolling constantly. <laughs> uh, like, n- normally when you play the game, you have to roll. And then jump to to not stop your movement. Otherwise, Link is oh, Link. Okay, what, <laughs> I'll call him Link. Whatever. Yeah, it's Link, Link is going to the to, to the roll and then then stop in the tracks unless you jump. <laughs> but I find that if you jump, you can cancel the jump by doing another roll. So what I'm doing is I'm jumping and then instantly doing another roll all the time to get this this weird rolling effect that you see on screen. And uh, that saves loads of time as uh, rolling is a lot faster than than running or jumping. So you want to be rolling as much as you can. So that's one of the restarts I did because I did the rolling. And um, like every time we restart, like I find these small things as well. For example, when it rolls down certain corners or jump or whatever, you can get a corner boost, which I didn't know at the time. And that can save a few frames as well. So I kept trying to add those in whenever I could. And uh, mostly small things all the time to save a little bit of time. You... Um, but every single frame counts as mentioned, so I had to redo. Save more frames. Save the frames. <laughs> always, always saving the frames. Oh, always. You uh, you mentioned a roadblock. Was it 4-3 or 4-3? Uh, 4-2? 4-4. Uh, four, four, four. Four four. Well, can you take us through that process a little bit? Like what, what, uh, what was the roadblock and how did you eventually overcome it? Yeah, it, 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 can you skip to that part in the video? Sure. You think? Um, I it's don't the know ice, what... ice world. What level? Ice world. Okay, let's see. Ice world. Let's find it. It's easy to, to, to see it uh, at the same time as yeah, I'm absolutely. explaining it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Force Frenzy. Nope. Still not there. Oh, uh, earlier before. Is it after this? I don't know. Uh, later. This is fine? Yeah, it's good to happen there eventually. Okay. So, um, uh, level 4-4 four, four is a water level. It's one of the longest levels in the game. And uh, like swimming, it tasking swimming. It's it's not hard. It's it's fine. It's just boring to do. But um, there's a glitch called the split up glitch where you you enter level, and um, with only one Kong, you throw a DK barrel and then start and select out the level after you finish it. And uh, the next time you enter level and destroy a DK barrel, you can control both Kongs at the same time. You just split them up. And um, if you do that. And uh, you're in like one character comes like the inactive character still, and if the inactive character is uh, standing on an animal companion, and the other character dies, then when you start the the level again, uh, you're going to already riding that animal. So even if it's a water level, you're going to ri- ride Expresso in this case. You're going to see soon. So uh, 
instead of swimming, you can jump around and run around with Expresso. And that's a lot faster than swimming. But uh, that provides a couple of other problems. Um, one of the things that uh, you can do in that level is to jump through walls because of the... Uh, I don't know really why, but you can do it when you're riding Expresso and jumping around, but you can. So you can take like shortcuts for the level. Instead of going around, you can go straight for the wall instead. So that's fine most of the time, but um, the level's programming isn't set to be able to, to run that quickly in the level. So the camera speed is really slow all the time, but you move past the camera all the time. So uh, when you're that fast, like the, the camera can't keep up with you. So you have to be testing off screen of camera, which is kind of annoying to do. <laughs> but uh, the, the camera also needs to keep up with the moment in the end, because you, you can't finish the level unless the exit has been spawned, and it's only going to be spawned if the camera is close to it. Uh, so right here, I'm setting up the glitch. I'm dying in me there. Yeah, That's I was like, what's going on? <laughs> this is uh, interesting. Yeah, and then we enter level again, and I'm going to get Expresso and kill off the other character. And now, as you can see in the level, I'm running around with Expresso in the water. So bonkers. <laughs> and quite quickly, I'm all the way past the camera. And you see the camera is going, it's like trying to follow you the best it can, but it can't. And the problem here is that you still have to f- follow the level geometry uh, for the camera to keep up. Like, even though you can glitch through the wall to skip a lot of section of the game, the camera is going to get stuck there. And if the camera gets stuck, you can't, uh, you can't spawn the exit. So uh, you have to redo and try to keep up the camera. Uh, and I simply couldn't do that. Uh, also, the other problems, because when, when you're testing, I was using a camera hack. Um, and with the camera hack, you have like all the enemies spawned that are supposed to be spawned at that point. So even though like you're up here, the camera is down here, uh, the enemies in this section are not going to be spawned normally. But with the camera hack, they are spawned. So even though like in the game without the camera hack, I can run straight through this enemy here because it doesn't exist yet because it hasn't been spawned. But when passing, the enemy is still there, and that is a bit of a problem. Uh, so that combined with a lot of other things end up being way too much for me to handle. So this level made me give up two times, and in the end, I wasn't even the one who finished the level. It was a guy called uh, Alyosha, Alyosha, something like that, who kind of took over the level and tried to test it himself. So uh, if it wasn't for him, like this task would never, never be finished because I couldn't do it. It was too frustrating to do. When, when you mentioned camera hack, is that is that a, a modified ROM or is that something that the tools are able to do? How is what? How does that some of that come about? Yeah, it, it's a tool. Like it, for okay. many games, uh, your character may be too fast for the game to handle. So in order to to be able to see what you're doing with testing, you can uh, you can modify the camera using a cheat code, pretty much a yeah. script to uh, force the camera onto your character anyway. Um, so that's only present when you're testing. So when you're replaying the test, that's not going to be a scene at all. And uh, it, it's fine. Like you, you may use any kind of uh, hack like that, as long as the, the normal game is going to sync up afterwards. So it's fine. But even with the camera hack, like doing the scripts, like I, I couldn't do it anyway. It was it was too hard for me. The, the, so many challenges presented by this game, and I, you maybe you mentioned one earlier. I can't remember. But are there any strats that? were put into this task that you never thought of that actually ended up either you that you were surprised to ever see in an rta run uh because there's once again vibrant donkey Kong country community a lot of people speed run the game <laughs> anything mm-hmm. you put in the task i'm like no way they'll ever do that in, in real time and then they end up doing it yeah, yeah that's like i mentioned the start like it's one frame tricks and um like most of me they talked that me and Aaron did They've only between us. Like we didn't post anything in test videos or whatever to tell people about it. Because uh, like for, for one, people liked back then more than now, like to have uh, some surprises in the in the runs, like show tricks that have never been before seen. Yeah. And uh, most of the things I didn't test, like I was the only one testing the game at the time. So uh, like I wouldn't help anyone else by sharing my strategies because no one else would need them for anything. And we didn't think that most of these things were viable for RTA anyway. So sell a lot of things were kept in the dark for in the rest of the community. Uh, I've been digging up some some of the things later and show like, oh, I found this 10 years ago. Sorry for not telling. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of feel bad about it. And uh, that's become a meme in some of the yeah. communities. Like, oh, Tampa found this long ago. 
You know, others on the on the podcast, uh, Sweden, Frezzy Man, Energy, they've, it wasn't malicious. You know, we totally understand. Like, first of all, nobody was live streaming in 2008. So, you know, the way that you could surprise your friends and the community was to, you know, withhold these things until the video went public. So I totally get that. Yeah. And then unfortunately, though, <laughs> maybe there's some things you maybe once somebody forgot or something. But I think this was such a cool because that was what we had. This is how you surprised people was by showing them yeah. on a video. Yeah, but it is kind of depressing because like I held back the community for so long because I never told anyone about this trick that you could do because I thought it was too hard for them to do like, right. eh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I, I'll be just perfectly honest. I don't know a ton about DK, DKC speedrunning, but uh, I have a friend who runs the game and at some point I think there's like six or seven, there's a, a lot of single frame inputs in, in, this, oh, in the yeah. world record runs at this point. You know, I, there's tons. And so the fact that that many exist in a world record run is... Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still mind blown, and I'm sure that's not going to be the end of it. Like, like everything with speedrunning, right? There's going to be yeah. <laughs> the next one. Yeah, in the end, like you have to to, to do all these one frame tricks to get a good run, to get a record run, and um, it's kind of become a thing in the community as well. Like all these one frame tricks, like no one wants to do them. Uh, <laughs> right. So DKC isn't as fun to do. Right. It, in compared to like DKC two, which doesn't have too many of these tricks, they have lots of them too still. But uh, that. So, so people have like uh, made a category where like these clips are banned because they want then they don't want to do them because yeah. they are too annoying to do, and which is understandable. That's come up actually a couple of times, like more than a couple of times on this podcast, which is kind of an interesting mm -hmm. phenomenon happening that with optimization has come, uh, you know, some grinding that some of us are not necessarily into and, and, and I, yeah. part of the speed run is learning and getting better we, we we love that process but the single input you know as humans because we can't translate you know this to this fast enough mm -hmm. uh, uh that can be a that's that, that's something that's really interesting and some people are really into that by the way i don't want to take that away from anybody but I, it's interesting that that's become a thing in our community that some of these tricks yeah. have become so challenging doing so many of them at a, at a time it can be a little yeah, bit can be grind <laughs> In some games, like it's impossible to achieve perfection because it's going to be hard to, like, <clears throat> like in the game country, like every time you roll and jump out and roll, uh, if you want it to be perfect, you need to both release Y for exactly one frame only at the right time before you start the roll. You need to jump at the exact right frame every time to be 100% optimal. Of course, that's not going to happen. And that can be a bit frustrating as well when some games are. Uh, like it was Super Mario One, for example. Like everything has to be absolutely perfect to have a chance at the record. Like every single thing has to be perfect, more or less. <coughs> so um, that can be a bit devastating for people to to know that. Okay, do you want the record? Okay, have fun. Put <laughs> put your life into the game and maybe have a chance at it. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you feel so uh, good about this task. And even though it did take a decade to, <laughs> to make happen, because, uh, you know, a, a lot of times it's, it's tough for us as speedwriters to find satisfaction in the fact that you're, you're proud and, and you've left this, 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 this thing with us in the community. I think that's, yeah. I'm glad to hear you say that because uh, there's so much work that we put in and there's still, I'm sure things are going to happen. There are going to be discoveries made where there were some frames yeah, that yeah. can be saved, you know, it's just, it's inevitable. Yeah, the, the, the amount of improvements in this task, like it almost going to be, uh, the there's different like wrong warps you can do at the same time oh, in this yeah. task as well, for example. Uh, but yeah, I would never do it. You'll do it because <laughs> I'm satisfied with it. I don't want to spend another ten years improving it. <laughs> so but, uh, I, I, I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. That's so great to hear. Uh, at this point, you know, having speed run for so many years now, um, do you, what kind of games or what, what keeps you, uh, you know, into gaming at this point? I mean, are, do you enjoy games casually? Is there what are some of the things you do nowadays? <laughs> Yeah, I don't play too many games at all these days. Um, like, yeah, I'm doing some Super Mario speedrunning, a little bit of Link to Past speedrunning every now and then. But, uh, like, I've been stepping further and further away from the speedrunning community lately, I suppose. Um, for casual games, I'm still playing a lot. Like, I'm playing Pokemon on my Switch right now, for example. There you go. <laughs> um, that's, the, that's the main thing I play right now, and some PC games. Uh, I recently started playing Celeste. I haven't played it before. Oh, great game. So, uh, some casual, but the, the speed on the apartment is, is kind of lacking, I suppose, compared to what it used to be. But I've been around for for like 19 years, 19, oh, uh, 17 years. Jeez. And some chains. It's coming up on two decades. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> 
If you don't mind me asking, I noticed that in, on your camera, I can see that you have a piano behind you. Do you enjoy music or are you a musician or do you, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I, I did play some piano. I, I don't think I'm really good at it, but I, I do enjoy playing. And uh, I also have a harmonica player now and hey! then. It's good fun. There is... I, I have found this interesting crossover between speedrunners and music. Um, we've had drummers on, we've had uh, keyboardists, yeah. guitarists, and and people who just enjoy. There's, there's. I don't know if you've felt this or discovered this, but there is. I, I used to be a musician. Um, I teach music nowadays, but like, there's Ooh. this interesting approach that is similar with speedrunning and this attention to detail that music has as well. And I'm curious if any of that is a crossover for you, or is it just something a little bit more casual you enjoy? <laughs> I mean, when I started speedrunning, like when I went to, to my first game done quick in 2012, uh, we had a piano at the, the, the location, and there were a lot of people playing the piano at the time. Uh, like, um, I did see a runner called TJP. Uh, I was living at his place as well before the, the event. And he played the piano, and there's a, a runner called Karechi who played the piano. He did a piano for, like, a, a live during the stream for Castlevania and a couple other games. That was great fun. But I, like... I didn't really think about anything at the time, like if this is a common thing that people like, play instruments and speed at the same time. Um, I just think like, yeah, that's just a hobby that people like to do aside from the speedrunning part. But I suppose like when you're playing the piano, for example, you as a, speedrunning is kind of muscle memory. Hmm. Like you time the buttons at the, at the same right time. And at the piano, it's the same thing. You time the keys at the same same frame to the music. To play perfectly, so I guess there's some kind of combination there, I suppose, um, that you can make a parallel to. But uh, I don't really give it much thought, though. No, that's cool. I, I, I that's, it's interesting you're into it because I just, I, as you mentioned, you have friends who have uh, are also into playing music, and it's that uh, it's it, it never ceases to surprise me. I, I the last mm -hmm. GDQ that was in person, I remember they had a little band playing on drums and piano oh, yeah. we're still it's still the thing that goes on today in the hallway it's it's really kind of fun and almost uh serendipitous which you know just like this thing that happens just a uh, thing that happens casually and organically it's pretty cool <laughs> you've had a bit of jamming session at uh i think it was games done quick 17 which was the mm -hmm. last one i went to uh, i was playing the piano i was playing harmonica you had um, bismuth playing uh, the piano and we have uh, the mexican rondo playing his flute I had a little jam session, like people came by and requested songs to be playing. <laughs> it was so much fun to do. It was one of my most fun experiences, I think. I hope there's some videos around of that somewhere. It's like, that's the kind of stuff where it's like, you <laughs> Probably, see yeah. that on the stream, you know? So it's like, uh, so cool. Uh, so uh, you also mentioned you've uh, just uh, before we started recording that you've attended, uh, except for this most recent one, every single ESA. Uh, the events are kind of this interesting thing. I'm curious, you know, will you uh, even uh, if you you know don't speedrun as as much as you used to? Is this something you want to continue doing? Uh, the you know uh, attending events or going to them and being around some of that stuff. Yeah, back when the, the first let's take a step even further back, uh, yeah, the first please. gaming event I went to. Uh, uh, I mean, what's the interview you did with Freezerman, for example? Hmm. He had a, a gaming uh, gaming event at his, at his place, like a neighborhood that I was invited to in uh, 2007, maybe eight. I oh, can't wow. remember somewhere yeah. around that time. <laughs> uh, so that's like the first time I met uh, met gamers in general. Like we had never been to any of those meetings, and it was so much fun to find like people who had the same uh, same hobby, the same uh, same enjoyment from these games. Uh, so when I went to my first games done quick in 2012. And it was like the first time meeting speedrunners in general. And it was so much fun to get like a face of these people I have only talked about on the internet. <laughs> They've only been a name. <laughs> yeah. And and back then, my first event, I think it was like 90 people total at the event. Oh, wow. Small. And um, at that time, you can you get to like talk to everyone. You get to know people. Like, <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's him. That's uh, that's Cosmo. That's Runner Guy. That's yeah. uh, TDP or whatever. Right. Uh, so you get to know everyone's name. You get to talk to everybody. And... Uh, to me, it was a lot more fun to have like a smaller group of gamers yeah. compared to the big one. Because now when there's like 1,500 people, like I don't know any of these people. Like there's so <laughs> many people, so many communities. So many communities, yes. Yeah, so for me, like I I guess I kind of feel like uh, alone in a sense. Like there's yeah. so many people like I can't connect to to anyone at the, at the same level as I did before. Uh, I feel like kind of an outsider now because I'm not into the gaming, the, the speedrun community as much as I used to be. Um, like I still uh, to hang out with people when I go to these events, and it's a lot of fun still. But 
most of the time I'm just wandering around uh, alone <laughs> at events. Uh, I'm not really doing doing much. <laughs> that, Talking to some people and now and then. No, I think that. Uh, so I I only got a chance to experience that a little bit because I didn't go to my first event until 17 or 18. I can't remember, but we had a local event here in California called Calithon, which was mm-hmm. I think there might have been 50 people there total. You know, and yeah. it's there is something to that intimacy, or at least where you it, it's a little more, it can be a, an easier place to to strike up a conversation and. Uh, yeah. But with the growth of speed, right? Oh, there's a, I, I always love asking this question. When you were doing these things back in the aughts and, uh, you know, 07, 07, did you ever think that the speedrunning community would grow to what it is today? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, remember if I had any sub fourth process back yeah, then. Yeah, you even thought of it? <laughs> but I mean, uh, back in the first game, the, the classic game that I created in 2010, yeah. uh, when we first started streaming it, that was small people people hanging out in the micro java's basement so like <laughs> there, there was there was nothing like but of course a lot of you think like huh oh, well you can probably do this this bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger but uh like when we first met one million dollars i think it was 2013 uh that was like now nah, that that's not going to happen yeah that's and now <laughs> that's like a... one million is it's a small amount yeah, these days day like three, they, 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 uh, you know yeah <laughs> precisely it's nothing <laughs> see i mean you can try to, try to think of it logically. Of course, it's going to grow bigger if, if you want to make it bigger uh, to some extent. And yeah. uh, I don't know if uh, it was in, in the US, like uh, if it's ever been on, on television, like Games Done Quick or not, because it, it ha- like ESA has been on Swedish television many times, different mentions and interviews and stuff. Um, so that kind of like the, the general media is picking up on it more and more because they see like how big this is, how much money that's going to charity and stuff. So they want to be a part right. of it, I suppose. Mm-hmm. to document it you touched on something that i think is uh important or interesting to note and that is the you, you know there's all these different communities now and one of the things you really enjoyed was kind of the, the not that it was small but that the, you know you could you could get to meet all these other people you know in yeah. a smaller venue I, I would still say the discord servers that i enjoy being in the most are the ones that are a little bit more smaller because there you find like what you're saying is uh, you, you're around 15 or 20 or a hundred other people who are passionate about the same thing you are. And you could, you, you mentioned your Skype calls during your, 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 some of your yeah. tasks and during DKC and everything that, that that's part of the stuff that I'll never get tired of talking about the games I speed run. And I, I think that's something that's, that's really interesting and kind of probably what keeps me coming back to speed running is these, these, the, the communities that are, you know, passionate about the same things I guess I'm passionate about. And it sounds a little selfish, but at the same time, that's, it's, it's nice. We don't meet people like that out in the real world. So it's nice to oh, meet those people. Right. <laughs> and one thing I liked when they, everything was smaller, like when they, when the streaming became a thing with you stream and Justin TV or mm-hmm. anybody, um, I was like all the all the stream chat. I was all the big streamers I was watching and hanging out, and uh, eventually, like all the games they were running, like a lot of Sally games mainly. Mm-hmm. I I learned the games pretty well, and the people like a lot of people that hadn't seen the stream before, they had no idea what's going on, right. and I became like the, the the helpful mod that kept <laughs> answering people's questions all the time. That was like my main thing. I I taught people what was going on and helped people understand things. And I kept doing that for years, like I have my my main hobby in a way. Um, so that's that's what like what I did mostly when I was streams. Like I didn't really care too much about the run itself because I had seen a run of Ocarina time so many times. I knew everything that was going to happen. So I spent most of the time reading the chat, connecting with the chat, answering people's questions nonstop. So I was kind of the, the, the guru at the time, the the, the guy who knew everything. Uh, but back then, back then, like there weren't so many people know, knew anything. But these days, like, there's so many people that can teach the, the oh, same yeah. thing a lot better than I can. So I can like obsolete in that regard that you, you don't need me anymore <laughs> to explain things because there's so many, uh, so many guides, speed and guides, speed and tutorials that explains oh, yeah. all these things already. So that eventually kind of dropped my interest in watching streams as well because I've been watching speeders for so long. This there's, there's not too much new right. all the time. So I, I like I, I don't watch the uh, streams for the, the games i don't care about the games <laughs> too much it feels weird to say but the community is still fun like yeah. i watch most of the smaller streams these days than bigger streams yeah. try to connect with the people to have a uh, have fun 
<laughs> if you'll permit me uh, just a moment to geek out uh, for just a moment, and I hope this isn't embarrassing, <laughs> but th- that's actually how I discovered who you were and what you did uh, oh. back in 2014, 15. That's probably when I started watching speedruns, and I was watching Mitch do Super Mario Brothers 3, and you're in there answering everyone's question. <laughs> and I was just, I was blown away. And and finally, somebody's like, who is this Tampa guy? He knows everything's going on. Yeah. Mitch is like, oh, Tampa's probably forgot more than you know. Nobody, anybody knows about Super Mario Brothers 3. And I'm like, oh, that's, that, 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 that sent me down on this path of education, discovery, and all these things, mm-hmm. all this stuff that was out there, you, because of your tasks that were available and stuff, and YouTube was around at that point. So it's like, uh, I, it was one thing I, I gravitated right away that, uh, you know, your knowledge of all this stuff was on another Indeed. level than a lot of others had at the time. So I, I mean, like, most famous I watched watching, I became like mod everywhere. Yeah. Like, uh, it was kind of meme that that Tom is mod in every channel. Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> I went to someone's stream, I'd never been there before. I was mod already. Like, okay. <laughs> You're right. pre bind You're already mod it before you know the the streamer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was one time it was kind of funny. Uh, he had this uh, IRT channel for the Zelda Spinner community, and uh, <laughs> one day there was one people joined the channel and he kept asking questions and uh, no one answered them instantly. Uh, I was in the channel back then as well, so it, like he saw my name in the channel list, and he asked in the, the comments like, "How do I use Tampa?" <laughs> He asked because he thought I was a bot because that was also a common thing. So I was so quickly and answering like everything constantly so fast that people thought I was a bot sometimes. Oh my gosh! Top so that's how like how do, how do you use Tom? But it's a, it's a good meme. I like it. Funny, funny. How cool to be memed like that! That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a perfect place. I, I mean, I, I, to, just to be perfectly honest, when I first started this podcast, you're one of the first people I wanted to chat to, and it's taken me 60-something episodes to, <laughs> to ask you. Uh, but, I, you know, it's I, I feel it's I, I've just that there have been so many things that we uh, that we as a community who enjoy this stuff. I'm a fan and viewer. Uh, I know that they wouldn't have existed if it weren't for some of the work that you've done. Yeah, how to use the Tampa bot, right? That's, yeah, yeah. that's got to be a real <laughs> my, my family knows all about it. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes one like people, a lot of people know who I am, but sometimes think like, what did I really do for the speedrunning community? Uh, like, I haven't done really m- m- many speedruns. Like, I've done runs at uh, both um, Game Time Quick at the USA, but they're all really bad, <laughs> to be honest. Like, I did the regular seasons at both Game Time Quick as well as um, USA. I've done the Donkey Kong Country for both of them. I've done Zelda the One of Gamelon on both of them. But uh, they haven't been good. So, like, I'm not known for doing good speedrun runs. Uh, I'm being known for like people see my name in in Twitch chats most of the time. The knowledge and, uh, that you people... shared, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, pretty much. And seeing some of the tasks I've done, like, oh, this was a good task. Who made it? Oh, Tampa made it. Okay, nice. Oh, we made this one too. Um, but like these these days, I'm not doing much. I'm not streaming. I'm not being part of any big communities. I... I'm barely doing any testing. <laughs> It, it's not always easy to put, uh, you know, an exact date or anything like that. But I, I am convinced that for many of you who were speedrunning and on SDA and the times in, you know, the early mid 2000s, the early 2010s, we wouldn't be where we are today as a speedrunning community if it weren't for you all deciding to, you know, I'm going to submit my runs. I'm going to take that extra effort and get the VCR going, or I'm going to submit my tasks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I know Twitch and GDQ and YouTube and all these things have obviously helped proliferate this stuff and make it larger, but we wouldn't exist the way we do today. And the reason I'm so thankful for that is because I met so many friends and people who are interested in the stuff that I am <laughs> and, you yeah. know, my wife doesn't game, you know, for, you know, and so like a lot of my friends and family, they, you know, I don't, I, I it's tough to talk to them on sometimes a little more technical or extreme level so <laughs> without the things like you and others did it we just wouldn't be here so i, I that's why i'm forever thankful <laughs> yeah, ahead of time. Uh, uh, one uh, thing i forgot to mention like in these yeah. uh, twitch chats as well uh, like in the early days people weren't really nice on, on stream like people are kind of jerks quite a lot of times <laughs> and uh, i tried to be like nice and helpful but like when i first started answering questions people were like they even got mad at me because like <laughs> this is the internet you shouldn't be helpful very much I even got banned <laughs> for not trolling once. Oh. <laughs> I mean, like, come on. Oh, <laughs> so I tried to like, show some some positive vibes in the in the community, I suppose, as well, to be to be helpful because no one no one was answering these questions. No one did, did that work. So I kind of started the whole thing, and uh, eventually people learned uh, like taught each other instead. So I didn't didn't have to teach them again. So people took after me. 
Well, you know, uh, having hosted shows on GDQ, it never surprises me some of the shittiness people can get into in Twitch chat. Yeah, so yeah. it's uh, I, I'm thankful that you were there, you know, n- not afraid to answer questions and, and talk. <laughs> One of my big, big hobbies right now has been for uh, since late 2005 is answering YouTube comments. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's, a, <laughs> a, toxic, it's a toxic thing to do, but... Uh, at two six, right? You're a brave that. soul. The uh, you think Twitch so like, uh, Oh my gosh! Almost daily, I and go to like specific speedruns, and normally all the ones like Mario and some Zelda games, and see comments like, "Oh, this is cheating! I got hit there." And um, instead of being an asshole back, I try to answer instead. Like he's not cheating. The the, the hitboxes are bad. Like the parent has, and I post a video or a picture, or whatever. And uh, most of the time, like. People are still mad at me <laughs> afterwards, uh, the YouTube. But uh, if I can, like, explain something for one person, he's like, oh, thanks for explaining that. Like, <laughs> that's fine to me. I don't care about the, the 100 trolls that try to do stupid things. Like, if I can explain one thing to one person who actually cares, that's, that's fine. I'm happy. It- it's 2022, and I can't believe that YouTube comments are still accusing people of cheating. Like, I, I we, oh yeah, all we the have. Time. I mean, it, it blows my mind that that still happens. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I love yeah. answer like uh, uh, Darby and all the 456 round of Mario one, Bros. 1. Yeah. It has many million, million views on mm. YouTube uh, to this day. And that's one of the videos I go to almost daily to answer <laughs> comments for. And uh, I lost it today, some cheating comments. Like, he got hit 50 times. I saw it. Like, I know this game. I played it since I was a kid. I know how the game works and whatever. As, um, oh. But it was, it's kind of the same thing when I started watching speedruns, like the, the Morimoto tasks. Right. If you watch the test, there's so many suspicious things going on, and you can see that he he's touching a a wrench at one point that's supposed to kill you. So you see, like, oh, evidence! I say it! I say it! Yeah. I say it! You died. Yeah. But um, back then, like, you didn't understand the games how they work. You just go by the experience you had when you played it, played as a kid, and um, uh, quite often, like, your memory isn't going to be. You, you can't remember everything that happened. So most likely, you also touch enemies without dying, but you didn't think much of it. You think, like, every time I touch an enemy, I died. So why does he... So, like, I was kind of the same thing back then. Uh, oh, so you can really uh, a little bit. Beginning. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, like, I understand, like, if he, if it looks suspicious, like, it's the internet. You shouldn't trust everything you see on the internet because you, you can fake everything. That's a good point. Good point. <laughs> but people can't... People can't think that, like, oh, it might be real, and they try to understand, like... Or like do a simple Google search on hit boxes in Mario One or whatever. Right. That's the way too much effort. <laughs> so people go the quick way and say fake instead of trying to understand what's going on. Open up a tab and did Google search something. I know it's a lot of effort. It's a low bar. Yeah. I'm just saying, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> very low bar. Uh, well, uh, Tom, yeah. thank you so much for taking so much time to just kind of relive some of this stuff because I, you know, I, uh, to your point, we mentioned it earlier, some of the videos don't exist for some of this stuff. Or, so just reliving some of this history uh, is a lot of fun <laughs> and, yeah. and, and good to know and, and just fun to learn about what you y'all were doing back then and, and what you were specifically doing. So uh, thanks again for taking so much time and chatting about it. Um, you mentioned you're still doing your, you are racing occasionally here and there on, on uh, SMB3. Uh, where can people, if they, people want to watch you doing those races, where are you doing them? <laughs> Uh, well, I stream on my channel, I guess, uh, Tampa, uh, on Twitch. But uh, <coughs> the race that I'm mainly on the uh, it's a girl called Alice who has a Discord server. We she's hosting the the, uh, the streams yeah. uh, the, the races every Saturday. Alice HK8. Uh, yeah, yeah. So she has been doing that for uh, for one year now. We had a one year anniversary last week. Nice. Uh, so we had a kind of big stream. Uh, so this one race going on at this very moment actually started about twenty minutes ago. So that's where they do it every Saturday. And uh, I don't think there are any other, other races going on, really. There are some small ones over here, then, but that's the big one. And uh, normally it's for the Warpless category, but sometimes we do 100% or other things. And but uh, that, that's, the, that's the place to be. You can also find you on Darbian's uh, 456 video in the comments if you're... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're I go by Tampa A. <laughs> Yeah, is, if you it, scroll down, you can see like 
if someone has replied.com, it, it's most certain to me. I actually do want to shout out your YouTube because you've got videos that are 10 and 13 years old on there. And it's so it's super cool if you want to see. You even uh, posted some of your works in progress. And I think you have some links to your uh, the commentaries too. I, folks, if you haven't, the commentaries, I know they're they're uh, a f a years old now, but there's still some just really interesting and, and cool stuff to show how you got to where you were. And others join mm -hmm. you, Lord Tom. There's some other ones that, you know, from on different commentaries, which I think was really fun. And I thank you so much for <laughs> having kept those up and kept and keep them posted. Uh, super helpful yeah. for researching stuff like this. So, uh, um, I'm just going to post, show one thing, uh, all history. People at Games Done Quick 13 is going to understand this thing, but no one else is going to. This is this is old school great history. It's a red pepper <laughs> made of foam. <laughs> and uh, I'm not even going to explain it. Okay, maybe I shall. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but back then at Games Done Quick uh, 13, there was a um, it was a big box for some reason with loads of these things. It has guest services on them. And uh, I can't remember like, why we had them there. Like, I guess there's some kind of promotional thing. But um, one day like I was bored or whatever. So I started picking up them and throwing at people. <laughs> so every once and then like, people got hit one of these from the back. Like, what happened? Like, huh? And I was laughing behind a corner or whatever. And uh, then I started hiding them. Like, I put them in, in people's hoodies all the time. <laughs> so some the people find, like, these in the, the hoodies, in the clothes, in the, in, the, in the bags. I even put one, like, on the, on the NES where you put a cart in. I put a pepper there and, and shut the lid. Oh, no. So when you open the, the, the cart, there's a pepper there. <laughs> so it, it became, like, a, a hobby at the event. I kept hiding these everywhere, and I put them in funny places. So people kept trying to find them. Like, in the vending machine, I put, like, instead of a, a Coke coming out, there was a pepper lying there. Or whatever. It's just a good, a good old uh, fun history thing for those people. There. <laughs> uh, and some people hated it. They, they were so mad at me for hiding these in their clothes or whatever. I love you but, so much. Uh, it was too. so That's much so fun. Great. <laughs> uh, so cool. Good old memories. Good old memories. Good old memories. Well, Tapa, yeah. thanks again. I appreciate it. Um, I will look forward to the next <laughs> race and still seeing you doing some of that stuff. It's cool, super cool. So uh, thanks for taking yeah. time. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for doing this. It's great. Thanks everyone for listening, watching, viewing, liking, subscribing, and sharing. All of that stuff goes a long way to helping out the podcast. If you'd like any additional info, you can go to sequencebreakpodcast.com. All of our past episodes, everything's on there. You'll find everything there. If you'd like to watch live, follow the Sequence Break Twitter. That is Sequence Break PC, and you can join in, ask some questions, watch the whole thing live. It does happen. It's not really a set time, but I do post when I go live. Everything else, if you have any questions or anything like that, podcast at sequencebreakpodcast.com. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one.